stop using single use plastic. Oh, yeah. We are on the path of 99% mortality for the coral reefs. One night a week, you have to talk you to your win. family about climate change. You would win. That's it. I did the first thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But if you, yeah, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be. So, uh, my name is Raya. You can call me Rai. I'm a second year bachelor student. I'm currently studying political science and international relations. And part of that is also environmental sciences. Uh, I'm also working at an NGO called EcoCare, and I'm working on a project to promote environmental citizenship. I'll tell you more about it later. <laughs> Why did you choose environmental sciences, like specifically? Um, well, actually, it's part of my degree, so I didn't choose it. But um, I guess that was one of the things that pushed me towards working in the environment field and, you know, choosing to educate myself more and be more involved in, in climate change and environment, fighting climate change, right? Yeah. Going back to what you said, did you say environment citizen? Citizens assemblies. What, what, what is that? Okay, so uh, citizens assemblies, it's something that's been practiced like in places like the UK, all over the world, right? Basically, it's just um, an assembly of citizens and there are no requirements, no qualifications. You know, you just have to be a citizen of the country. Um, and our citizens assemblies are focused on environment and uh, increasing environmental resilience and fighting climate change in the Maldives, right? So we bring together around 50 people. Um, we try to make it as inclusive as possible, including uh, migrant workers and people with disabilities and young people and elderly people and basically come together to like deliberate on um, environmental issues and I think what's so cool about it is it's not people who are very well versed in environmental sciences, it's just ordinary citizens. So can me and Sabra join the citizens? Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. <laughs> All right. One exercise we do um, with the elderly uh, participants. So we bring them together um, with some maps of the region and we, we ask them to like, it's a timeline exercise. So we ask them to show us, you know, what changes they have seen. And I think it just struck me like how, how much uh, the islands have changed in just one lifetime. And what they're seeing today is not what, where they grew up. And I will never be able to see that. I think that's, that's what really struck me. Yeah, I, I mean, when you say that, that's like exactly the thing that stood out to me the most as the most kind of powerful impact of climate change um, and something that I quite often use in, in like our advocacy is because, you know, even if I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, Like, so the things that I see now um, is not going to be what my kids are going to see. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's what we call the shifting baselines of, of science and like species and and climate change really does show that like there's less stuff now for us yeah. to see <laughs> and we can never get it back well we can yeah. try but we can't yeah. turn back time right in this unique position of being able to influence your own generation but also the generations before you because people like your parents and your grandparents care about well like they, they care about what matters to you. And if what matters to you is your future and your environment and you know, your livelihoods and existence, I think then you have a greater chance of making people change their behavior and change their policies. And like, mom, I think it, it just like talking to her about these things, um, I come to realize how, um, she's less aware than than we are now because cl like this issue is you know if you open the news social media everybody's talking about it but at that time it, it was not as urgent of an issue they didn't realize how urgent of an issue it was and i think honestly it's just con like they're so connected to nature compared to me for example they grew up in the islands and it was just a huge part of their lifestyle and i think that 
they have such a deep love for their island. So I think it it all goes back to that, you know. So when I'm talking to her, I just tell her like, you know, I don't get to see the beautiful coral reefs that you did, and I don't, I don't, I don't get these things, and I don't think that like my children or my sister even is going to be able to experience like the beautiful nature that I'm experiencing now. And I think that that's what strikes her too. Yeah. And it's just little things that I have to tell her, you know, like, let's not use those plastic bags. So I think the conversations about climate change goes within your family as well. So I'm under the impression ever, like, how often do you have these nature or climate related conversations with your parents or family, for instance? I think um, one thing I've learned through the Citizens' Assemblies actually is that we are talking about climate all the time, whether we realize it or not, right? Exactly. Just when they're talking about their childhood and um, their lives, like that's also a conversation about climate change. And yeah. From the way I look at it, what you can do in the Maldives and what you can do in terms of overall climate change are two very different things. Right. Um, because Radzega, our carbon emissions are still negligible in the global context. Right. But what we do in terms of advocacy, awareness globally, the policies that we push for in like international climate negotiations for, you know, greater reduction of global carbon emissions, more access to resources for vulnerable countries like the Maldives to be able to adapt. Those are, those are things that we can still do. I mean, like, what you do in citizens' assemblies or the stories that you hear um, there would be so powerful to be used in like negotiations when we go, um, you know, for COP, for instance, because it puts a real kind of a real life case study to sometimes what is seen as a very abstract issue. More conversation. I think that rather than rather even than the news or you know in the education system i think like just connecting to people having conversations even like this you know just that that is the most important like human connection you know just have a conversation maybe we it. should set like a national challenge or something I think like one night a week you have to talk you to your win. family about climate change you would win. That's it. I, I think the first step to this is us joining the citizens sabra we should join them She's already in it. It's you. You're already in it? Yeah, it's you. <laughs> you're, on, you're in all of these things. Diving, citizens, like... I'm the only you one. Come for her game. Yeah. Uh, send me your information. I'll send okay. You. Yeah. If we did a challenge where you had to talk to your family about climate change would. again, what would you, how would you start that conversation? I would start a podcast. Oh my God, that, I don't know. <gasps> Seriously, come yeah. on. It's like, <laughs> like me and then I get everyone together and then I ask some questions. What do you know about the ocean, you know? The ocean? I mean, that's for my oceanography bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's switching from low to oceanography. Uh -huh. I feel like he's very... <laughs> I am. Is that your new... It, it's my next venture. Uh, so, I yeah. see, I see. Citizens Assemblies go out about me on the hill to guide it at the current outcome document. I just said, Koba, like, what do you see as the next step from that? Um, I think it's really cool, like, how you know, since the assemblies, I have been so in touch with the participants, especially the youth, and they're coming to me telling me about all these cool projects that they're starting themselves. One of them has started their own NGO and they're doing climate work. And, you know, they're so involved in, in any opportunity they get to fight climate change. And even even for the mock cop for this like um, opportunity too, I'm, I think there's like four or five participants from the citizens assemblies. And it's really cool. Like I'm still in touch with them. And, you know, they say like that was, um, a starting point for them, I think, you know, and I think that that's a really cool outcome, you know, that from the assemblies, like now they've started their journey as an environmental citizen and they're being so involved and so active. And I just want to give them a little shout out. I just think that's, that, that's so cool. It's really great. I mean, the more people who are inspired to, to do these things and, and have more conversations like this, the better, though. So, Sabra, this has been a really good talk with you, Raya.
Raya. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Your name's Raya. Right? Yes. Hi, Zammat. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Seriously. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Uh, I'm Zammat Khalil and I'm an oceanographer. So I have... Uh, I have been working in the climate change arena for about 15 or so years and 10 of them has been in the government doing policy work as well as climate negotiations and so on. While I was studying in university, one of the researchers there, professors there, he presented a paper on committed climate uh, sea level rise. So basically we were almost at one degree at that time and he extended the sea level rise scenario on to the next 500 years. And it stopped at somewhere around 1, 1.5 meters. That is the committed sea level rise that cannot be stopped anymore. And 80% of the Maldives land is below 1 meters. The highest point of Maldives is 3.2 meters. Yeah. So that's the significance of 1.5 So in uninhabitable. Basically, <laughs> there are options. What are our options? So in climate adaptation, you usually have three categories of responses. One is uh, you do protection, you do adjustment, you do retreat. And the fourth kind is called advance. So we have done protection. We can see all around Mali. Uh, we I'm not sure whether I have an example of retreat, but for example, let's like uh, the depopulation of Kelako that happened. That was people had to be moved. Or what has happened in Tawil Fushi. So people moved there because the island was, the island they were, they were living was, they were not feeling safe living there. And we also have the case of advance, which is uh, Polomali. It's built higher, it's built safer. So moving forward, how likely do you think we are going to be able to implement all of this? I'm not sure, I, 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 I don't know how likely it is. The thing is, the options are there, uh, the mechanisms are there. The question is whether we'll be afforded or whether we'll be afforded in time. Climate change, because it's so big and huriha impact ki abadu mihing daily konferna chis kantata kenu so it's it's hard to explain to people sometimes that yes this is actually climate change and this is what is happening me una gabu kurang undagu kameke climate change ki it depends on the audience ki nakkan ki aden so you cannot talk about i me ane radiation force and all those things to somebody who does not know what that means. And a school there, we start with, okay, dunia warm way, you experience more heat waves, and kiam, 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 was you present some infographics and all those things. And the relate kura point a key are based on what their interest is. Mudang interest to regia, what happens to the ocean? Beaching interest to regia, what happens to the beach? And an ekal gota gilapari led current, and then asumigo by far on the guatan koleki, some of the climate change impacts gets exacerbated by human activity as well. And human activity exacerbation happens in a shorter time period than in Sadaka Rangiro. Bodora Giro Magirani, climate change, Saupune Bunang. It would be a wrong assumption to say. So we have to start with and we talk about knowledge base base In general terms, return periods specifically the baseline ki it was rare. Now Nara incident. So that's a common occurrence from a rare occurrence to common occurrence. Okay? And this is related to climate change in terms sea level rise and increase in uh, extreme events. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how have I not been informed about this when my country is already in this state for the longest time? To be honest, 
are right. every new government comes in and say okay we need to do something about sea level rise there are options to do we need to build re reclamation higher and higher did you know that that recommendation was there 40 years back one response ki ane ahar ko far more maade veli do veli do veli do which will increase the height by couple of millimeters every year so that should keep up hillum hillum na yaradana do so the the idea of we need to build higher was still there that was still a requirement it was never put in paper in a policy to be implemented that was 40 years ago do you think 40 years ago that would have been practical 40 years ago malega velino would be very practical every year come ge ko pura ka ven ಬೊಡೆ <laughs> 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 it it looks feasible it sounds feasible air yeah the mihar vagote ki when you have engineered solutions thar wala bodu foundation engala you cannot start lifting the foundations of building souls all of a sudden i'm rajya ke building tangala kon foundations are not designed for that they happen bodu ra a coach a kang or the man with them sir yeah that was one of my initial and uh, msc project ideas no basically and uta me kene ngan nache to how and why no then 98 was a bit too far out to make a banani observation only am even data was a complete one and 1989 no fashion kanne ge tide was guna pasha for raj so i was looking at the 2006 event 2006 ka udhar ikhange ge do over 96 islands udhar age 92 islands sak udhar age that was one of the bigger the events on a recent history gati ma for no and ane a it was a few years after tsunami we everybody was a bit more scared of bodora uh, at that time and a lot of reporting came in. so we were able to get kita rashatto eri ki ha varakatto eri ki ha ri keldo metto so echita ane eralo ai konta konto badam we i did a little bit of study where that information is coming and the idea was it was coming of the coast of south africa ane for the storm me built up 2 3 days prior ko of the no rale all the way for indian ocean coast ko rajya hame and 198 then hama konna varakam ichi fenna 1988 ge rale skuna ko badalam there was a done uh, study done by an uh, japanese team i study ko me hum me hum vese ete relate koi e sarahatu ko fede tufan to ge tere tufan ko of the no an tidal wave ke okay. ಇತುರುಂಗೆಡ್ಜ್ understanding of what's happening get better over time well and tsunami is a special case but yes 2006 of ho okay we were able to pinpoint kon to fane ka we were able to do hind cast to kitar ralo ka there was two waves that was very kind of curious so we have a better understanding so we have mihar as of right now we know ಕೊಂ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ಹೆಗ್ಗ ತೋ ರಾಳು ಎರಂಗ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ತೋಟಿ ಕೊಂಗ್ ಹೈಟ್ ಹೆಗ್ಗ ರಾಳೆ ಕೊಂ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ಹೆಗ್ಗ ಕೆನ್ನ ಕೊಂತಿ ಮಾಲ ಕೊಂ ತೋಡಣಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಅಣೆ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಓಷನ್ ಗೋ ಫೆ ದೇ ತೂಫಾನ್ ತ ಕೆನ್ನ ಬೇ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ದೋ ಫೆ ದೇ ತೂಫಾನ್ ತ ಕುಂ ವೆಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್
geography lanka tantam unnati you won't get much however that's a different story when you get any storms or strong hurricanes in the arabian sea so the 2020 though may horfushi flood with 2020 right it flooded twice and that was mainly because arabian sea get northern russia batta gina far impact korane kolo southern batta ka it's the southern indian ocean if samate hi ve to me hun am like divahin nan understand ve han wat relate kore ve han me me anna like iturun wat tidal surge udaya eti iturun weather related changes ay asu musumi badala guli phone na kamaka వాగుతకి అనే ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్ ఈవెంట్స్ గిన ఫోమ్ మీ హోమ్ అనే మైండ్గా బట్టనే ఎపిసోడిక్ ఈవెంట్స్ కొత్త కదా యాస్ ఏ ఓకే దట్స్ వి ఆర్ సేఫ్ నౌ దాని క్యాస్ దేవుని ఫార్ వి మన ఓకే అగైన్ ఎస్ తి అయ్యే ఓకే దట్స్ అని క్యాస్ సేఫ్ అది సో ఏ దే తర మెదుక ఎదా టైమ్ దే ఆర్ లిటిల్ బిట్ టూ బిజీ విత్ అదర్ థింగ్స్ టు థింక్ అబౌట్ ఓకే మీ దే తర గెప్ ఏదో క్యారీ వేత రతన తో దే ఇస్ గోయిన్ టు బి అ మోడల్ షిఫ్ట్ in climate system at every 0.5 degree celsius so 1 degree of faho we have already hit some of the tipping points that we cannot go back on 1.5 degrees ka we'll hit another tipping points that we are going to so 2 degrees ka we hit a tipping point that's very important to all this a from that 2 degree and hit room of faho if it continues to be at 2 degrees or above 2 degrees and we are on the path of 99% mortality for the coral reefs you you so understand now, the significance now, now of that now i know how though. important 1% is and i mean 1 degree sorry but yeah so that means we need a drastic reduction of fossil fuels but that's not entirely in our power the i mean we produce barely like negligible amount of emissions um it's about you know, negotiations and also all the other kind of advocacy work we do is about trying to convince those that can and should to reduce their emissions so that everyone can maintain an in a, a habitable world eventually we will end up in a world where we will not be using fossil fuel the question is how fast can we get there and how much of the fossil fuel are we going to keep it untapped go at and collect ki some of the entrenched technologies that we have so sada ka sakal sakal do bada do va sakal kitanga har tere ka bada kurana maybe 10 years 10 years so basically within 10 years there's a possibility that you me har gang gule me petrol sakal do ko electric sakal ka bada for sure there's there's Why a good chance you walking? um cuz I like to reach places fast. <laughs> like I'm not that fast and you know, I I can walk, I can run, but if I walked here, I wouldn't look this good, you know. <laughs> I'd be all sweaty. Do I look bad? No, you look, oh you walked? I walk. I mean. <laughs> Do I look like I walk? <laughs> I'm sorry that caught me off so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I guess it's time to start walking then. I mean, you don't look too bad. Like, this is oh, all okay. right. It's just like... Um, what do you think about the solution? The solution, and what are the... There's no one solution. The solution is... Like, what can we do locally? What can we do internationally? So, locally and internationally. So, locally... And, uh, so, as you said, and, uh, we emit something like 0.00... 3% of the global emission market we make up annually per annual and emission so that which is insignificant and we completely wipe that off it's not going to make a dent in in the system but we have other i mean kike bunani reasons to do that a reason na ki ane rajya ke all the energy that we use is important that is a big economic cost for us we are barely able to make ends meet the rupiah the rupiah bapa unit of electricity still going miharu miyaduge agabbadaru 
they are producing electricity at thin rufia ba hatha rufia rate ga the rest is paid by the government for all the residential people but that's the true cost of electricity and can you guess the me bridge ga ala 5 megawatt ga solar panel do current to still ko me kan ki ha var kat to can i guess could better the guessing game but um can i have a estimate you know no no guess guess um, it's cheaper than what they are producing a rufia ba it's a rufia ba it's a little bit lower than a rufia ba is so oh. excited <laughs> So, right. any difference? Kin rufia bang of it, they ching a rufia bang of it. They by using one of the most expensive mitigation technologies that is available on the market. So, is that cost something that's going to be cheaper for us in the long run than what we were doing before, or are we going to stick to the solar panel? So, here's the thing. Yeah, me aro. Okay, twenty five years you're locked in on a solar PV. You have a rufia bang. and a diesel vegam it depends on the market and ko mere ko cycle do confusion media media yeah okay wale wale lie media but let's say let's pretend i said 7 years ago 7 years ago okay 7 years ago that would be 2016 17 no market ga fuel price was somewhere around rupee and rupee later your tank fuel ko leve ne 520 rupee aaya me har ko ren 150 ah 150 110 115 it depends cycle me him band there here ane bodu ichcha 3.6 pcx pcx yeah so it's like 1 110 nara ga gana kada komme far fuel full tank yeah it's about 4 liters of yeah. fuel and hey so you tell me whether me ोल diesel dum beyanu koranya met go sap so ie projections ab badar ane 2020 ga 3 rupya ba 7 rupya ang fadda current 2030 ga fadda ne 1 rupya 6 rupya aya so when you take production cost into account that's the yeah i i understand what you trying to say now so before we wrap up i would like to ask you one more question and for me it's a very important question how would someone like me or someone young and who doesn't know a lot about oceanography get their footing in this area like personally from this conversation i have found this very interesting and i want to know more the jargons everything but where do i start so you're a maldivian there yeah so the easiest access would be to go to the sea go to the sea seriously <laughs> go to the sea and see and see that's okay. what i'm doing tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> now that's one of the important things because i have done diving and one of the best things i enjoy about diving is you feel yourself breathing there while you enjoy things right. and that's an experience It's a, personally, I don't like to go diving because when I wear the goggles, I can't see because I wear glasses. They have prescription goggles. Do I get the prescription goggles and I'll go see for myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Rafa. Um, welcome to Seriously. This is. Uh, we just wanted to have a little chat about. climate change and um specifically about how it impacts young people and what we can do in terms of climate action so welcome hey hi marfa um i just recently finished my o levels and now i am interning for ws as an intern for the surveying team with my passion for the environment and the ocean i get to gain practical experience in the field and you know get a perspective of where i want my career to be headed with them so 
<laughs> yeah, I'm really glad to have this talk with you. So, have you seen any changes to the climate and how the ocean has changed at all firsthand? I'm still 6, 17. So, um, I haven't really seen a significant change due to climate crisis. But it's always a discussion that I've been hearing about ever since I was really young. And I grew up watching, like, documentaries from David Attenborough and stuff. And I see these vibrant house reefs. And I go snorkeling, I go diving, and I see white fleet corals. And it's very disappointing. And it's like a few colorful ones. And it's just, yeah so different though to what we see now uh, it's still beautiful but there's a what they call the the shifting kind of baselines of of nature um that th because of climate change those baselines are shifting even more um and what we should do you understand what i mean yeah, I I that there's those exactly like she said that the the colors of the coral or the hells of the coral is changing now and what we see now, even though it's beautiful, isn't as beautiful as it was before. Just stop using single-use plants. No, that's good. So I've, I've been contributing. So every time I go shop, I throw everything in my gym bag. So it's like, yeah. So I, I am helping. Yeah. 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 That's great. It's a step. <laughs> it is. I mean, it is. Every little bit helps, though. Um, but I, I also think, like, what you said about... Um, like one of the, the main reasons why I decided to, to dive is... Uh, or to get the license is is because I wanted to know more about what I was actually talking about for my living, though. Um, in terms of ocean conservation, protection, coral bleaching, I wanted to see it for myself. And I think when you are, well, like you said, when you take people swimming or when you take people snorkeling and they actually see what's in, in their lagoon, um, what their homes are built on, it makes it, I don't know, I think it makes a difference. It's a yeah, bit it's sentimental to see it like that, yeah. I haven't seen it, but now Sabra has given me the whole idea that I'm missing out. So I should so definitely... FOMO is basically what's going to make you save the planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go diving, see the corals. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs>